kick this up. Glory to Griga. There you are. And not a moment too soon. What's happened? Taya's busy working herself into an early grave. Since the arrival of her latest patient, she's refused to stop, even for a moment. I've tried offering to see to him in her stead, but she won't hear of it. Clive, she hasn't left the infirmary in days. She's pushing herself too hard. And if she doesn't rest soon, will you talk to her? Order her to her chambers, if that's what it takes. Because if she keeps this up, I fear the hideaway will be without its best physica before too long. I know better than to order Taya to do anything, but I'll speak to her. Oh, thank you. I pray you have better luck than I did. Well, Taya, Rodriguez worried about you. And if what he says is true, then so am I. We all admire your dedication, but you do need to rest. I will, when it's time. Until then, I'm staying put. We owe him that much. Who is he? Someone from my past. Someone who doesn't deserve to die alone. It won't be much longer. The Crystal's curse has almost finished its work. If I had the tears, I could ease his passing. But without them, we've nothing that will touch the agony of those last few hours. How would tears help this man? Not my tears. Tears of mercy. Alicia, it's the only thing strong enough. You wouldn't, Tyre. Surely. There must be something we can do for him. Sometimes an easy death is the greatest kindness we can offer. You'd do well to remember that, Rodrigue. I, I will. We have all the ingredients we need for Alicia Balwam. It needs to be fresh, though, so we rarely have much to hand. I can make the draft if you can bring me what we're missing. Just tell me what you need. There is a species of venom-weeping spider that lives in the forests of Norvent, near Lorbert's Pass. Bring me one of their eyes. Preserve it as best you can, but avoid contact with the tears. I'll make sure the other ingredients are ready before you return. Thank you, Clive. I won't forget this. Why, you stole
Rodrigue could have mentioned his spice with the size of curls. by now. Thank goodness you're back. Taya looks like she's about to collapse. Is this what you needed? Yes, it is. Thank you, Clive. I'm loath to give a patient Alicia, but... Taya's right. Sometimes it's all we can do. A single dose dulls even the most agonizing pain and all other sensation with it. It may be a gentle way to die, but it is death nonetheless. I wish there was another way. How are you feeling? Light, my dear. Drifting on waves. Good. Just relax. Let the waves carry you to a better place. Thank you, Daya. I'm... so proud of you. He's gone. Thank you, Rodrigue. And you, Clive? I'll see that he's properly laid to rest. The man you helped today was my mentor, back in the Southern Isles, on the front lines of some meaningless war. I was still a child when they shipped me to their triage tents to treat the wounded with my gift. But in such blighted lands, I was next to useless. Until he taught me the true physicer's art, that is. An art we would be lost without. Tears of mercy were his gift to the bearers of the world. A respite from the agony of the curse's end. And the kindness Sid would have approved of. You know as well as I what life is like for a bearer soldier. Marched from one battle to the next, never knowing which might be your last. A commander may care nothing for the bearer spent in his service, 
But my mentor's gift give the dying one fleeting moment of tranquility before the end. I've no tears left, Clive. I've seen too many of my friends taken. Something needs to change. And we need to be the ones to change it. And we will. I promise. I hope so. If Amber and the Lazarus are gone. Miss Shirley, how can we learn to be careful? Sid, heard you were in Canva fetching young men. the flowers I had you bring back to the yard? Vaguely. Is something wrong? I'm afraid so. I was able to get most of the Morgan beards to take root, but they rarely flower. I fear the soil here does not agree with them. However, I believe I have a solution. I can't wait to hear it. I'm going to marry the Morgan beards with morbles. I know, I know, but hear me out. Morbles are possessed of a highly choleric temperament. The fire which drives them appears to be maintained by an abundance of nutrient-rich ether drawn from their environs. I believe that by grafting a morble vine to a morgan beard, the appendage's wealth of vigor-inducing nutrients might well stimulate the flower to bloom. The endeavor, I assure you, is scientifically sound. I simply need a vine to prove the theory. And all you need is a single vine from an ordinary morble. That is correct. A single vine. As for the morble, I fear ordinary may not suffice. But as luck would have it, a most extraordinary specimen is rumored to haunt the swamps of Rosaria. Why, a notice concerning this very creature was only recently posted on the hunt board. How timely. I shan't keep you any longer. I know you have much to do, as do I. Now, where did I put my watering can? than the irony hammers. Blackthorn can see. If it's knowledge you seek. Yeah. <laughs> 
That was definitely anything but ordinary. Now, let's get this vine back to the yard. Sid, I, uh, can't help but notice that your satchel is twitching in a most violent manner. Here. It's your problem now. What an amazing specimen. The flesh positively throbs with vitality. If I can successfully graft this to the Morgan Beards... Uh, when? When I successfully graft this to the Morgan Beards... I suspect the results will be immediate. I shall begin at once. It is just as I hoped. Witness. How the Morganbeards have taken to the blighted soil. How they bloom with heretofore unseen vigor. Why, I dare say such a vine graft would yield similar results when applied to other specimens as well. I'm glad I could be of assistance. You've not only helped us, Sid. You've saved us. Do you recall the extract with which I provided you before? I took a moment to distill some more. But this time, with the petals from the invigorated Morganbeards. And would you believe? Its potency has nearly doubled. You must accept this file as thanks for your assistance. The rest, I shall give to Taya. Clive. If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. It'd better all be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Not find a better price than that. Is that all?
Cole said it was an army of Akashi. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Come to claim your just desserts. All yours. Best of luck out there, Sid.
if it's knowledge you seek. Rutherford? Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? Why would he be at Martha's rest? My lord, Marcus, is that you? It is you. Then you received my letter. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your lord uncle's estate. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... It's all right. Continue. I am here at Martha's Rest, at the behest of your lord uncle, tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. And what I have learned is grim. The fall of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. The gears of governance have ground to a halt, and without a steady hand on the tiller, the realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord, uncle, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate and is determined to see it set in motion. That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the Seven High Houses. Alas. Alas. I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword, Yet in these dark times, even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old Imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. I suppose I'll start in Dalamil and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I shall pray for your success and safety. It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire Republic. So if someone here has seen something. Well, they've left us. The gentlemen of the town guard.
Ready, girl? Faster! Someone's got himself in trouble. I don't see your master here. So you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Uh, uh, please! These men are trying to rob me! I'll deal with this. Thank you. Are you that one's master, then? <laughs> if you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. Or you can go back to your garrison and I won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat. as much from Hugo as faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. You're one of Rutherford's men. He sent me to look for you. Well, then you have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. That... I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon the captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more, and his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free, only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. I would imagine they are unaware of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Then it's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. You won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's. If he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at Northreach and see if I can pick up his trail. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. What happened here? If you're with the others, they've already relieved me of my belongings. I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. I am Alastair Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. It's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? My Lord Marquis? 
Uh, yes. Yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital when I saw some villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Founder knows I've met enough of their kind. You head back to Northreach. Visit the Vale. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. They just couldn't resist, could they? This one's ours, pretty boy. while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, Traveller. This looks to be all of them. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. And stand by as ill might befall the heir to the Ducal Throne. It's just Clive. And I'm fine. Which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Rockford, listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. I... Of course. I shall return to Northreach right away. But 
Allow me to thank you first. Had you not happened along, I... Don't thank me. Thank Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a pistolus as soon as I'm able. Good day. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. If it isn't already too late. I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one piece. Still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it a constant flow of information. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be putting it lightly. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must work quickly. And we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's wish, as it is mine. If it's knowledge you seek, we've told you. Hopefully it's nothing, but I should speak to Blackthorn just in case. Blackthorn, do you have a moment? Not really, no. This won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, that you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Still, you've got a keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just, well... Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. And that was? A sword. An odd-looking thing with a single-edged blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. You could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. So that's what's troubling you? Nah. No, no, no. They're not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How do you get an edge that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. I'll see what I can find out. Sharper swords are always welcome. 
And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. Sure a soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you. Let's see what Karen knows about this sword. You're looking well, Karen. What you want? Out with it. I want to know about the sword you show Blackthorn. Single-edged and extremely sharp. Running around after him again, are you? I suppose I am, yes. But I need to help him find out how to work an edge like that. It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections. Which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? Suppose you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? Fine. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignac's the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favourite clients. Reckon he'll still be at the inn in Dalamil, where I left him. Thank you, Karen. Oh, and he's a touch eccentric, if you take my meaning. I appreciate the warning. People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. My reputation will be ruined! Ruined! Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oaf this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat... fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You have but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. And that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell.
and best of luck. <laughs>